Hello, and welcome back to another video game bedtime story. I'm your host, Sensei Pong. Today we're reading Mario vs. Donkey Kong, and the rivalry begins. So snuggle up, don't forget to like the video, and hit subscribe for more content. Mario vs. Donkey Kong, the rivalry begins. Before Mario was known as being really super. He worked as a contractor alongside his little brother. Now this isn't to say that those days lacked enlightenment. Al contrario il mio amico. His first bouts were full of excitement. Mario at the time had a girlfriend named Pauline. She was pretty and nice and always quite keen. There was also Luigi, but he's not really in this story, despite being his brother and important in all their, well, later glory. It was back years ago on the 9th of July, a hot summer's morn, Mario had to work that day. Luigi had the day off and Pauline said goodbye, and Mario, ready to work, left without any dismay. But as Mario rode the subway, he overheard a radio speak. It was a news break of dire straits and transgression. The reporter boomed. Alert! A woman's up a bad creek! A giant ape named Donkey Kong has turned to aggression. This is madness. This is badness. The fearsome ape DK has kidnapped a poor lady. He's taken her to a construction yard on the corner plaza of Cress. Mario was shocked. That's where he worked. He just had to listen to what else the report would say. Yes. Okay. News update. Listen up. The damsel in distress has been identified as a girl named Pauline, and Donkey Kong has taken her and is now headed high in the air, climbing up, up, and up! Mario alerted from his regular routine. He had a new job to do. There was nothing but to save his friend from the horrible scene. Reaching the tower of eye beams and ladders of oil cans and barrels, Mario looked up to see DK in a loud, frightening frenzy. There was Pauline at his side yelling for help, and police too scared to confront the mighty ape throwing barrels aplenty. So Mario gathered his courage and marched towards a ladder and began climbing high. A barrel had rolled down and smashed into an oil can, setting it into a fiery blaze. Mario ran, climbed his way towards the top, up higher and higher, reaching great heights in the sky. Then more barrels came down as Mario dodged and he jumped. It was close, but he trekked on, for Mario was clever and could outwit the laddery maze. Finding a hammer, Mario grabbed it with confidence. A barrel rushed after him, but he smashed it to parts. Then he had found Pauline's parasol that flew down from above. So he threw it below to the onlookers. To safety, he was making saving Pauline turn into a masterful art. Up ladders past flame, Mario was determined to save his beloved dame. Donkey Kong, high above, stopped and he hooted. Donkey Kong, the giant who no one could tame. A crowd below gathered and saw Mario have courage. In great shouts of cheer, the crowd called to their hero, and in glorious hollers and roars, they rooted. And as Mario leapt towards the high tops of the tower, Mario began to get frightened as he approached DK's gargantuan power. But far down below, a man named Miyamoto watched and was inspired to turn this act of bravery into a game. After barrel upon barrel after jumping a flame, Mario endured as he climbed up to the top. And though he was tired, his strength did not wane. Mario gripped his giant hammer and smacked DK with a bop. Donkey Kong blinked twice, unsure what had hit him. Dizzy and confused, he plopped to the ground. He blacked out and fainted as if the Sandman had stopped him. Snoring a little, DK fell asleep, without a sound. Pauline, still in panic, looked around to see the commotion, glanced towards DK at her feet, snug as a bug in a rug. Mario was relieved, Pauline overflowing with emotion. Mario strode proud but fatigued as Pauline rushed to her hero, giving him a kiss and a hug. What happened to Donkey Kong, you might ask? Well, he's okay, he's fine. He was having a bad day. He's an ape after all. We can't hold that against him. He was captured by hunters, then saved by the zoo, but the zoo was out of bananas, and frankly, 
That made him angry beyond the feeling blue. Okay, I know, that's how Donkey Kong's problems normally arise. He's a pretty simple dude with a one-track mind. And as you probably all know, that's not the end of the tale. It was only the beginning of many adventures to come, for both Mario and Donkey Kong, both heroes without fail, began their rivalry that day in a fight with Mario, who won. The